Now, when I say Spider-Man, what do you see? Do you see this, or this, or this, or even this? Whichever it is, I think it's pretty fair to say that Spider-Man is one of the most well-known superhero characters around the globe. But with Spider-Man Far From Home having released around the globe this week, I think it's time for me to talk about my personal favorite portrayal of Spider-Man in film history. I love the Raimi trilogy and Spider-Man 2 is widely believed to be the best outing of the web slinger and I get it, it is also my favorite. And let's face it, I even love the third one. I enjoyed aspects of the Mark Webb duology, but they are surrounded by some of the most baffling creative decisions I think I've ever seen. So in the end the entire movie gets completely bogged down and ends up being just a disappointing mess of a film. Then Homecoming came around and John Watts gave me a movie that was incredibly entertaining and my new favorite portrayal of Peter Parker as a teenager. That's right. Spider-Man 2 and Homecoming are two of my favorite Spider-Man films and they can entirely exist together as number one because they are completely different interpretations. So you can imagine that I'm very excited to see Far From Home. Yeah, I still haven't seen it actually. But there is something on my mind that doesn't let me sleep anymore. So naturally here, I have to say it. I think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is the very first comic book film to seamlessly bring a comic book to life. Now, let me begin by admitting that I was never a comic book reader. I was never really a reader at all. Since the very beginning, my favorite way of consuming stories has always been through the audiovisual medium. So comics weren't something I was rushing to buy or really very interested at all as a format. Not in its storytelling, though. As a kid, I loved Spider-Man, the X-Men, Batman, Superman, and the Teen Titans, all because of their animated TV shows. I was aware since the very beginning that these characters and stories were comic book characters, but that never influenced my opinion on them at all. I just loved these shows, no matter where they came from. Then, as I grew up, I began reading digital editions of comic books. When I saw something like this, I was immediately hooked. Comic books have some of the most impressive artwork I've ever seen. Through the years they've become more and more cinematic and honestly, they kind of helped me a lot to pay more attention to how I tell my stories with just the visuals. So if you've seen the film, put all of that together and imagine me watching Into the Spider-Verse for the first time. Yeah, my mind was absolutely blown beyond repair. And not just because of the visuals, which if you want to check out a video essay that talks about that more in depth, then you should definitely go watch Movies with Mikey, where he did a piece talking about just that. There will be a link in the description for you to go watch it right after this video, of course. Into the Spider-Verse stands tall with an Oscar for Best Animated Film, not simply on the visual aspects of it, but because it managed to do something unheard of before. It managed to throw logic completely out of the window and trusted that its characters and their story would be compelling and relatable enough for the audience to go with it. And not just that, but to love it for it. The script for this film is filled to the brim with moments of genius and rarely does it ever stumble. I imagine simply reading the script to this must be a completely exhilarating experience. But the execution of the work is so in tandem with the story and its themes that you simply love it by the end. You should learn, Mark Webb. Now for those of you who have not yet watched Into the Spider-Verse, I could not recommend it enough. And I would love for you to check out this video once you do that. Because I will be spoiling the entire plot of this film. Getting down to some of the most interesting aspects of it. And I would hate to take your enjoyment out of your first watch. Just go watch it and don't worry this video will still be here. For those of you who have seen it, I bet you kind of know what I'm talking about. So let me tell you why I think Into the Spider-Verse is comic book filmmaking at its best. So comic book movies are hot. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. But the good ones are mostly part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe with some rare exceptions. So in the end, it feels like the MCU movies are what's hot. 
but if that was the case in early 2018, my whole perception would begin to change on December 14th, 2018. That was the day that Into the Spider-Verse came out on theaters, and everyone everywhere was raving about this film. However, my perception of non-MCU films was so in the dumps back then that I missed its theatrical release and waited for it to come out on Blu-ray. And I've never felt more stupid for having done that before. This film's theater experience must have been something truly special and not just because of the communal experience that watching a film with a few dozen people inherently is, but for the incredible attention to detail in both picture and sound that this movie gives you. And maybe a tear or two. The storytelling in this movie is fantastic. From the interesting interpretations of spider people the movie displays to the little character moments that resonate incredibly, this movie's message, much like I said the MCU's message was at large, is that anyone can be a hero. In this case, anyone can be Spider-Man. I was aware of the character Miles Morales in the comic book world and I had even read his origin story. I liked it but I always felt like I was missing just a little more relatability with him and his story. So when I heard that Into the Spider-Verse would revolve around Miles, I was a little hesitant. But the movie managed to do what I thought was necessary in spades. It made me love Miles Morales, a greatly relatable character with very human problems, but a completely different person from any other spider people in the group. And more than that, it made me love I believe every single character in this film. This scene between Aunt May, who has just lost her Peter Parker in her universe, meeting with Peter B. Parker, an alternate version who has already buried Aunt May, is so beautiful and well executed that it breaks my heart and warms my spirit at the very same time. This film goes out of its way to give the audience some truly powerful moments, and it doesn't shy away from the more mature themes that it tackles. Much like a Golden Age Pixar film, they don't talk down to their audience. They trust you to be able to jump into the madness with no previous knowledge of most of this and they still made you care. How? Because even if the details put together in a list look kind of strange, it's all in service of the story of a kid who doesn't believe in himself, who gets Spider-Man's powers and then gets visited by a bunch of alternate versions of himself, having to learn to believe in himself and work in a team to save not just the universe, but every single universe. It's not just the beautiful animation, the incredible action, or the amazing voice acting, it's every single part working in tandem to bring the story forward through its most effective medium. Say it with me. This movie puts a ridiculous amount of dedication to making each character on screen a person of their own. From the Morales, to the bad guys, to the freaking roommate, to every single spider people, they all get their own traits, goals and desires, as simplistically as they might be told to us. It is a remarkable achievement from part of the writers, then the director and then the animators to have put this much attention to detail in the right area. Now, don't get me wrong, this movie is the very definition of attention to detail. The frames just ooze creativity and the beautiful compositions are jaw-droppingly well executed, but the details on character work are just as important. They are the very spider silk that weaves this intricate story web together and its elements. And it's done to perfection. The little character building moments are so well spread out even amongst the ones with less screen time, that I literally was worried about the telepathic spider inside Penny Parker's robot. I was laughing hysterically with Nick Cage's, John Mulaney's, and Kimiko Glance's performances. I was completely thrilled with Chris Pine's and Jake Johnson's Peter Parker's, and I was incredibly excited and happy to see Gwen Stacy's Spider Woman brought to life by Haley Steinfeld. But Jamaica Moore and Brian Tyree Henry both take the cake with their performances. These two and their relationship, I would argue, are the beating heart of this movie. Maybe because I grew up feeling kind of the same way Miles does in this movie, being supported and pushed to succeed, but to the point of sometimes not having any freedom within that plan or any say. It sucks, and seeing Miles go through a very realistic portrayal of that 
along with the skin crawling reveal that his uncle is not only a supervillain, but one that is in pursuit of killing him, is some of the most incredibly complex dilemmas I've seen in a movie in a long time. As Alan Watt, founder of the LA Writers Lab says, the source of our story is our protagonist dilemma. And a dilemma is a problem that can't be solved without creating another problem. You know you've got a story when what your protagonist wants is impossible to achieve based on their current approach or their current identity. Okay, in other words, it's gonna necessitate a shift in perception. Okay, they're going to have to become a sort of new person, so to speak, by the end of the story. You understand that Miles wants something that is impossible because of his dad's opinions and hopes for Spider-Man and for his kid. You get it, and from both angles. That's the magic of this film. It's the effort taken to make you care about every single character in this story and make them feed into each other's dilemmas. It is the very soul of this movie and it shines through in literally everything. And also, said I wasn't gonna do this, but okay. I would be insane if I didn't even mention some of the visual wizardry in this film. So why is Into the Spider-Verse so revolutionary when it comes to animation? Well, they basically went above and beyond. They wrote their own render engine to be able to render depth with chromatic aberration, as well as layering the textures with dotted comic book patterns on top. They basically broke all the rules on how to make an efficient animated film and made everything time consuming but that only made it extremely rewarding because this story was already so strong, the animators could just focus on selling every scene as best as possible instead of having to guess how their characters might be feeling or behaving in that particular moment. And the amount of trickery that they used is simply brilliant. There is no motion blur, but the chromatic aberration is something that is employed every now and then. And some other times they do this ghosting effect where they only animate a part of the arm behind it for instance and it simulates motion blur. They took one good look at the comic books and they translated all the artwork and style of artists like Jack Kirby into motion. It's incredible that it worked and so well but that's why this movie it's literally a miracle of CGI. That is why they won an Oscar. So they basically brought a comic book visuals and its way of telling more over the top stories to the big screen in what might be the single best origin story in comic book film history. Again, this is my opinion. That is what every single comic book film before this was also trying to do. Some more blatantly than others, but every single filmmaker behind a comic book movie will tell you that they were trying to bring the comic book to life but they were never able to fully embrace it in my opinion, be it because of the medium of live action and its limitations or simply because of their creative visions. But what Sony Animation has done through Spider-Verse is completely embrace the original medium of comic books and its techniques and adapted them beautifully to their own style of animation. It's the closest I think we'll ever get to watching a literal comic book unfold on the big screen and I'm incredibly thankful that it wasn't wasted on a substandard movie. But even more than that, I'm thankful that these brilliant filmmakers and animators brought such a deep and complex story to life with this amazing craft. It really is comic book filmmaking at its best, and it might be one of the rare instances of filmmaking at its best. Who's to say otherwise? Into the Spider-Verse is one of the very few 10 out of 10 movies in my personal list, and as excited as I am to watch Tom Holland's Peter Parker in Far From Home, I don't think any other Spider-Man film will be able to achieve this level of perfection. But who knows, I could be wrong. Also that post credit scene is simply brilliant and it will probably never be topped, ever. Okay, that's it, bye. I hope you enjoyed that video guys, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you still haven't done it and make sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, that really kinda helps and do comment down below what is your favorite interpretation of Spider-Man. I will read some of the comments in a future video, but up until next time guys, bye bye